So we are called to know God. In Hosea 4, 6, I left you with this scripture last week. My people are destroyed because they don't know me. And since you priests refuse to know me, and by the way, how many people know that we are called to be a royal priesthood? We are called to be a royal priesthood. And what are we doing? We are called to present God to the people. That's what a priesthood does. Presents, well, the prophet presents God to the people, and the people are presented back to God through the priesthood. And that's what we're called to be. And so we are called to know God and, to, and not to forget the dictates that he has given us to do. And he will not forget you as you are diligent to be this way. And then the Bible says this, those that know their God will do mighty exploits during this time. And so that's where I want to start today is, what is this time? What time are we really in? What time was Daniel in 1132, Daniel 1132, what was the prophet Daniel talking about? What time was that? Well, we actually find that time in Daniel chapter 9. Starting at verse 24. And if you want, you can turn your Bibles there. You don't have to. I'm going to read the scripture. But Daniel chapter 9, starting at verse 24. Chapter, Daniel chapter 9, verse 24. 2-4. And let me just go ahead and read that scripture for you. Seventy weeks. By the way, a week is represented. A week really means seven years. So whenever you see weeks in the book of Daniel, it's talking about a seven-year span. So 70 weeks are determined for your people and for your holy city to finish the transgressions, to make the end of sins, and to make reconciliation for your iniquity and sin. And to bring forth an everlasting righteousness, to seal up the, so seal up the vision and the prophecy and to, to anoint the most holy, and that would be Jesus Christ. So there's a 70-week period that the apostle, I mean, the prophet Daniel is talking about. And for you that are good in math, that's how many years? 490 years. Now, therefore, understand this, that from the going forth of the command to restore and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, there will be, should be Seven weeks or 62 weeks. Okay? Those should be seven weeks and 62 weeks. Now, it's split into two here, okay? So, seven weeks till the command is to, to rebuild Jerusalem, and 62 weeks until Jesus walks back into Jerusalem as the Messiah, soon to be crucified. And by the way, that was fulfilled. That was fulfilled. And it's really cool that it, if you look at the lunar calendar, that's 62 weeks after the Persian king gave the dictate, edict to rebuild Jerusalem until and then until Jesus walks into Jerusalem is is 483 years 
It's an amazing prophecy that was fulfilled by Jesus Christ. He didn't look at his calendar. He didn't decide when the father would have him be born. But that very day that he walked in, he was fulfilling this prophecy of Daniel. And after the 62 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off. In other words, Jesus was murdered. The street shall be built again in the wall, even in troublesome times. And after that, the 62 weeks, the Messiah shall be cut off, but not for himself. And the, and the people of the prince who is to come to destroy the city and sanctuary, the end, it shall be like a flood until the end of the war of desolations are determined. So... What would happen is Jesus would be killed. And then a few, about 40 years later, 30 years later, um, uh, really accumul uh, cum culminating in 70 AD, Jerusalem would be totally destroyed. So Jerusalem was totally destroyed and it would remain that way for um, about 1900 years. Okay, and, it, and what this prophecy also means is that it's going to look like Jesus, that the promise is not going to be fulfilled of the Messiah. But it will be a troublesome time. But something happened in 1948 and then 1967. Well, Israel was built again. It was reclaimed by the Jews, and the Jews would inhabit it. It would become Israel once again, and uh, Jerusalem would be under the Jewish control once again. How many people know that's a miracle in itself? It's never been understood. How could such a thing happen that a, that a nation is born in one day? Well, a nation was born in one day. And all of our theology before that was hard because we never thought Israel would become a nation again. It's been gone for 2,000 years. Well, it became a nation. And all the replacement theology, what that meant is that preachers were preaching that the church replaced the Jews, but that would not be true, that, that God would to, one, one day rescue the Jews. And he has rebuilt Israel. But then, but there, but before, before Jesus comes back to rescue the Jewish nation of Israel, there is one week left. And that's the week we are quickly approaching. It's one week, which is seven years, and it's called the tribulation. It shall be the worst time in human history. But that week is fastly approaching us. Confirmed by one of the biggest signs ever that Israel became a nation again. And that generation would not grow old that would see that. So we are quickly approaching this final week of Daniel. And that's what the time that the people that know their God will do. Why do you exploit? That's the time that Daniel was talking about. So let's talk about that right now. We must understand that lawlessness must precede this seven year period. If you have noticed, the seven year period is, is happening, but lawlessness must increase. So lawlessness has increased, and it will increase exponentially 
according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work, and only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And I believe that restrainer is the Holy Spirit. And it's not just the Holy Spirit floating around. It's the Holy Spirit working through his people. And we see that in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? So we, is the body of Christ, the called out people, the unified church that Nigella talked about, we are called to restrain evil. We are called to restrain evil. And while we are here, we are getting in the way. Amen. We are getting in the way, and we need to get more in the way, amen? We need to cause more problems for what's about to happen. But some of you have been come, have come discouraged. Some of you have, have given up. Understand this, that the enemy wants you out of here. Amen? So, let's talk a little bit about this seven-year period that's approaching us. Last week I talked about SDGs, right? Sustainable, whatever, whatever. Let me let me see if I can find that. How's that for a definition? SDGs, whatever. But well, I'll I'll explain that in a little while. And. The U United Nations is having a conference in September. And this conference, what is it, Carlos? Sustainable Development Goals. Su Sustainable Development Goals. And if you look anywhere, if you look anywhere on the web, you're going to see the, these world organizations talking about SDGs, Sustainable Development goals. Thank you, Carlos. I should know that by heart right now. I've looked at it so many times. So the UN is having a conference on that coming up in September. And some people believe that that, that will be the beginning of the tribulation, that last seven-year period. Now, I don't really believe that. But you got to understand, by 2030... By 2030, these things need to be in place. They are quickly, the world community, the world government is quickly putting these things into place, and that will include your money. That's why they need a digital currency. And understand this, these things need to be in place before that all goes down. Okay, it, it, they're not waiting to 2030 to do it. It will happen in the next couple years, if not sooner. And so the, the world government is working diligently trying to push this along because these SDGs need to control your life. They want to control your life, and what's the best way they can control your life? We saw that last week with the mark of the beast. It's with your money, your pocketbook, your purse. That's how they will control your life. And by the way, I, I think it's cute when you say, yeah, I'm going to withstand that. No, you're not. And you know why I know you won't? Because the Bible says it's going to be everybody. <laughs> okay? It's cute. You, yeah, you, it's cute that you're standing against the government. It's cute that you've got all these conspiracy theories. Well, if it's in the Bible, it's not a conspiracy theory. It's the real thing. All right? Can we just agree on that? So there will be a one world government. There will be a one world uh, currency. And there will be a one world religion. 
And if you're not part of that, you are history. In fact, if you rebel against that, you'll have your head cut off within 11 days. That's what the book of Revelation says. Sorry about that bad news. But there is something that is called to stand in the way, and that's called the very small remnant we see in Isaiah chapter 1, verse 9, the remnant. You are either going to be part of the remnant or you're not going to be part of the remnant. And by the way, God is, is um, you know, there's a, there's a real big dictate that if you take the mark of the beast, you're history. You're not just history here on earth. You're history for the rest of eternity. It's, a, it's not going to be easy, church. But I can tell you walking in God's grace is easy. And I, me and Nigel were talking about walking in God's grace the other night. And it's like this. You, it's his grace that gives you the power to be an overcomer, but it's through your faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? His grace through your faith. Ephesians 2.8. Hallelujah. So, we must know our mission then. Why are we down here if we're not going to be able to withstand this one world government? Why did God choose to keep us down here? Well, there's one reason and one reason only. And it's not so you can be comfortable. It's not so you can have air conditioning. Our mission is very simple, to take as many people with us as possible. See, I think for a long time, we've been getting discouraged with this world for the wrong reasons. We see that we're not making changes in our government. Our governments are getting worse. Uh, things are getting worse. People are getting crazier. Uh, evil is, is on the uprise. We see a lot of stuff going on, and it has become a zero-sum game. What does that mean? That means for every victory you see, you also see the equivalent number of losses. And that's how life is going to be. You are going to see losses as we move towards this one-world system. Amen? But, you, but we're also called to see victories. So we got to just have the right focus and the right target as a people of God. And 2 Peter 3.9 tells us this. Look, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some have count slackness, but is long-suffering towards us, not willing that should any should perish, but that all shall come to repentance. God has kept you down here, and he has not returned because he wants as many to be saved, to be saved. Amen? And that, my friends, is our goal, is our mission. It's not to fight against or withstand against this or that or, or call it a conspiracy theory and say, well, I'm going to get a bunch of bullets. My son would always say, yeah, you go ahead and get your silver. I'm going to get my lead. Well, look. Your little AR-15 ain't going to do a whole lot against a tank. Just saying, okay? Um, so we have a mission. We have a mission to do something for God. And we just have to have the right focus. We, so how do we get there? We cannot be afraid of dying as we talked about. It, those that love their life will lose it. Those that lose their life in Christ will gain it. Matthew 10, 39 says that. This is not a, just a nice suggestion. Oh, you go ahead and do it for a while. No, God is telling us that we, if we don't lose our life here on earth, we will not gain our life in heaven. You cannot just 
play anymore and just say, I just want to make it in. I just want to make it into heaven. You know, when I die, I just want to have my ticket into heaven. Look, your ticket starts today, dude. <laughs> your ticket starts today. You need to start living in the heavenly kingdom right now and not wait for the great by and by. <laughs> Say bye-bye to the by and by. <laughs> That, that, that is our weapon, Revelation 12, 11. That through, it's through our testimony, it's through the blood of the Lamb, but it's also through not loving our life, but dying, being willing to die for Christ, amen? Are you willing to die for Christ? So let's talk a little bit about a four-letter word. How many people know that the Christian faith has a four-letter word? Can I say a four-letter word? This is, to, to Jesus, this is a four-letter word. Self. Self is a four-letter word to the believer. In Galatians 6, 8, those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature, self, will decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit of God living on the inside of you will ha harvest everlasting life in the Spirit. So if you are living for self, if you are very too concerned about self, now I'm not saying you should just let yourself go or whatever, but if you are so concerned about protecting self, you will not make it. Self, S-E-L-F is a four-letter word. It is a curse to you. When you try to protect self, you will die. Can I be any more clear than that? How can I be more clear? Do you all believe me? Do you believe that self is a bad word? It is. Self is a bad word. So don't, and then Galatians 6, 9 goes on to say, so let us not get tired of doing what is good at just the right time in due season. We will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. If you can look towards the things of the Spirit, if you could work towards the things of the Spirit and fulfill the things of the Spirit, you will succeed in the body of God of Christ, and you will succeed in everlasting. So how do we do this? How do we awaken? You know, they talk about woke. You know, the, that we need to be woke to, to all these things that are going on. You know, all these things that are ever-changing society tells us what's right and wrong. How do we be awoke to that? Well, we need to be awakened by the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5, 13 and 14 says, their evil intentions will be exposed by the light, the light of Christ that shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. That is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead. Christ will give you light. We are called to be part of an awakening. We are called to help people awake to the, to the truth of the word of God and to Jesus Christ who is our light. We are called to not only be part of that, we are called to be light to them. Amen. We are called to show, you know, I always find it interesting that God wants us to go from glory to glory. You know, he, he doesn't want to just show his glory from the heavens. He wants to show people his glory through you. You are supposed to reflect Christ. 
You are supposed to be the part that awakens people with that light. And so Isaiah 52, 1 says, awake, awake, put on your strength. Oh, my people of God, oh, Zion, put on your beautiful garments, the garments that will show that glory. Oh, Jerusalem, that holy city. How many people know you are the new Jerusalem? You are the temple of God. You are that holy city. And for there shall no more come into you, I'm circumcised and I'm clean. God doesn't want you bringing mess into it. And the way you bring mess is you bring self. God wants you to bring his glory out, but you got to allow him to do that. And so we are called to carry out a mission, not a mission to protect ourselves, not a mission to even buy up silver so we can protect ourselves like some crazy people do. But uh, talk about myself. Uh, no, you are called not to save yourself, but to be a light to others that others may come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. If you want to change society, look, I can't change society. I need God to change them, right? When people get changed, our society changes. And look, it's always going to be a zero-sum game. Some people are going to get saved. Some aren't. But God's going to surprise you with some who get saved. Amen? And by the way, that wasn't part of my notes. That must, be, that must be from God, amen? Hallelujah. So how are we to do this? We can only carry out the mission of God by becoming new creations, new creatures. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, therefore, therefore, Therefore means what? Therefore, pay attention. If anyone is in Christ, if anybody calls himself a believer in Jesus Christ, if anybody thinks they are saved, he, he is a new creation. He is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Self things have passed away. And behold, reckon, understand that all things have become new. Have all things become new in your life? And look, I understand that we walk through a life where we are consistently getting cleaned up. We are consistently being delivered. Does that make sense? And I'm not saying anybody's ever going to walk away from this earth, from this earthly vessel, completely free of sin. I'm not saying that. But you need to be sinning less. You may never be sinless, but you should be sinning less. That's how we know you've been converted, because God has taken things out of your life. And you have become a new creation. You have allowed the Holy Spirit to reign in your life. You have allowed the Holy Spirit to clean up your life. Romans 12 talks about, do not be conformed to this world. Do not... Try to be like the world, like the Joneses. Don't be trying to be all about self. But be transformed. And when we talk about transformed, we are talking about change. We are talking about change from the inside on out. We are talking about a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. We are talking about a new thing. You know, a caterpillar only can, contains about 50, I guess, uh, what are those genes things called? 
50 DNA things. How's that? <laughs> From being a caterpillar to becoming a butterfly. Because the, because the transformation happens in here. As we were talking to somebody the other day at the park, we, I talked about God wants to transform you. I was talking to a Muslim woman, and, and she thought she was going to argue with us, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. But, but we, are, we are in a religion, and I use that in quotes, we are in a religion that God wants to change you from the inside on out. He doesn't want to just change it outside. He doesn't want to just whitewash you with some white paint and say, hey, you're good. No, he wants to change you from here on out. That's why the, tr the transformation can be permanent. It can be, and actually, as we walk through troubled times, it can be easy. Because you've been transformed. So once again, the only way we survive all this stuff going on, and it's going on, and believe me, this UN Summit in, in uh, this September is meant to push that agenda along. They are pushing hard to, to make you <laughs> accountable to those SDGs. Look them up, Sustainable Development Goals. They are, look, they are pushing hard to make you accountable and obedient to that because they think they're rescuing the world from a three-headed monster. There's only one person that's ever walked this earth that can rescue us from this monster, and that, his name is Jesus Christ. But he wants to do it through you. He wants to do it through you. And so we sit in here, different people, different places, you know, different things going on in our life, different ways we're trying to handle all this stuff going on. Some, some you know, try to avoid it. Some try to, uh, you know, talk with their conspiracy theorist friends about it. Some try to use drugs to, to cover it up and pretend like they did, they're just out of reality. Well, God wants to use you. And I can tell you this, that, you know, I am not anxious for anything, but I trust the Lord Jesus in all this. And I trust that he's put us here for this. But you have to trust that. You cannot protect yourself any longer. You can't. This is, this is a, a dictate from the Holy Spirit that you cannot protect yourself. You will not make it. Can I be any more direct? All right. God wants to use you, the body of Christ. But you have to become part of the body of Christ. You have to be part of a new creation. You have to become part of the temple. You have to become that new thing. Amen? It's real simple. It's real easy. 